blockchain is set to be used to educate kids in Kyrgyzstan, IBM is launching a new crypto testing service and murder conspiracy in the world of cryptocurrency. Let's start the show. Welcome back to Crypto Global News. Please make sure you hit the subscribe and also notifications buttons so you don't miss an episode. I'm Edward and we're going to be bringing you the news from the world of cryptocurrency now three times a week on Sundays, Tuesdays and also Thursdays. If you're in Los Angeles, each episode will be live at 2 p.m. your time. If you're in New York, it's a 5 p.m. start time for you. And if you're across the Atlantic over in London, the launch time for the show will be 10 p.m. Enjoy today's episode. Niall Ferguson, a renowned economic historian, once named as one of the most influential people in the world by Time magazine, has said that he's been wrong about Bitcoin. The British historian said he was wrong to think there was no use for a form of currency based on blockchain technology. Ferguson said his son had told him about Bitcoin roughly five years ago. Ferguson at the time, however, thought Bitcoin was a complete delusion. He said his knowledge of the history of money led him to dismiss the idea, but now acknowledges he was very wrong. Dr. Ferguson is a very interesting and influential scholar. One can only wonder what historians like him will say in 50 to 100 years about the birth and also growth of cryptocurrency. Children's nonprofit organization UNICEF is in talks with the government of Kyrgyzstan to use blockchain technology to provide internet access to every school in the country. They are at the early stages of exploring a blockchain based solution for the Project Connect initiative in Kyrgyzstan, where the government is working with UNICEF and the private sector to connect every school in the country to the internet and provide access to information and opportunity to all the young people in Kyrgyzstan. UNICEF aims to engage over 1,500 schools in Kyrgyzstan and explore the use of blockchain-based solutions for improving and monitoring internet connectivity levels. At present, Project Connect has already mapped internet connectivity levels for over 150,000 schools across the globe. Of these, 1,560 schools are based in Kyrgyzstan, for which close to half are identified as having either no internet connectivity or simply no data on the matter. This could be a game change for the people in Kyrgyzstan. Let's see if blockchain can be their white White Knight. Switzerland's main stock exchange, the Zurich-based SIX, has reportedly launched trading of an Ethereum exchange traded product, the Amnum Ethereum ETP, a month after it revealed it was looking to launch a blockchain-powered exchange. According to the exchange's website, Swiss startup Amnum AG is behind the ETP Amnum AG. It's notably the company behind that claims to be the world's first listed crypto index of products. Let's see what this does for investing in all of Switzerland. On the 5th of March of 2019, tech giant IBM announced the development of a new service designed to test vulnerabilities in enterprise blockchain platforms. The initiative, dubbed the X-Force Red Blockchain Testing Service, is run by IBM's in-house X-Force Red security team and is intended to test the security of back-end processes for blockchain-powered networks. In January of 2018, tech advisory firm International Data Corporation published a report suggesting that by 2021, the amount of money spent on developing blockchain platforms will grow by 81.2% and global spending could reach 9.7 billion. Now the IDC sees the majority of this growth happening in the US with the country constituting over 40% of global spending. Western Europe spends the second most on blockchain platforms with China and the Asia Pacific region tied for third. IBM hopes to seal the security gaps in enterprise blockchain platforms before hackers can find and exploit them. Let's see how this project affects the greater crypto market market. And in our final story for today's news, we dip into the world of crime and also conspiracy. Gerald Cotton, founder of Quidrox CX, was thought to have sole access to the funds and coins exchanged on the cryptocurrency exchange. After his mysterious death in December of 2018, his colleagues said about $137 million worth of cryptocurrency belonging to over 115,000 customers was held offline in cold storage and inaccessible. The case has sparked numerous theories, including that he faked his own death and ran 
sign off with the cash. However, coin appointed editors from Ernst & Young were able to crack Cotton's laptop. What they found, according to an Ernst & Young report dated on the 1st of March of this year, was well, the accounts had been emptied in April of 2018, eight months before his actual death. In April of 2018, the remaining Bitcoin in the unidentified Bitcoin called wallets was transferred out, bringing the balances down to zero. This is what the report has said. The Ernst & Young investigators found other issues too. Quadra kept limited books and records and never reported its financials. There are also 14 user accounts, all linked to Cotton, that traded on Quadriga's exchange and withdrew cryptocurrency to addresses not tied to Quadriga. Who knows where the story will lead in the days and months to come. Many thanks for tuning in to today's episode. If you have any questions on cryptocurrency or just anything from this video, please drop us a line in the comments below. For Crypto Global News, I'm Edward. Until next time, you take it easy.